Well, good, good. Game week excitement. Um, obviously, you know, we've been preparing a long time uh, for this opportunity to come back in 2024 and, and open up against it, you know, uh, Kent State team from the Mid-American Conference. Uh, I think our team is excited to hit somebody else. Uh, they've been hitting each other, competing against each other for a long time against themselves. Um, you know, I think, you know, these openers, um, you know, sometimes you can worry about the opponent. Um, you, know, you, know, I, you know, I told the guys yesterday, I don't care if we're playing Georgia uh, or we're playing Kent State. You know, focus has to be on what we do. You know, it doesn't come down to what they do. I told them yesterday after practice again, you know, it's what we do as a, as a, as a, as a football player, as a team, as a unit, offensively, defensively, and special teams. Um, so to me, that's the critical thing is focus on us. Don't worry about the opponent. If we go out there and play the game we're supposed to play, I think we'll walk off the field uh, happy. Um, as you guys probably got the first updated you know, depth chart whenever you got it, um, you see there's a lot of guys that we you know, think are starters on that football team. Um, you know, we got a lot of guys that, uh, that are going to get an opportunity to go out there and, and you know, either start or be a, considered a starter. So we feel like we got a lot of those. Obviously, that quarterback position is one that you guys probably take great interest in, uh, probably more than, than I do. Uh, I didn't know who it is, but uh, we feel like Nate and Eli both are guys that we consider starters. So those two have competed their tails off all, all camp. And uh, we'll go out there and, and, and go. I think the starter will be determined how we practice this week. Uh, we got practicing yesterday. So we'll see how they practice, how they pick up the game plan. Uh, but the plan right now, OK, is to play both those guys on Saturday and, uh, and, and let the competition begin um, you know, on the field. It, it's one of those that I think is too close to just say, hey, this is what it is. Let's take a chance at it. I think both of them are very capable. I think they're both guys that go in football games for us, and uh, I'm excited to watch both of them play. Um, if you guys recall back in 2015, we did it. Uh, my first year here, you know, with Chad Boythick and Nathan Peterman. Uh, we got into game three, I believe, and, and, and it was over at that point. I wish I had made, it, made that decision to pick a starter quicker than that. Uh, but, you know, we're going to let it ride. Again, I, 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 feel, I feel great with both those guys. I think we got two uh, conscientious, smart, intelligent, athletic quarterbacks, and um, that's where we go there. Obviously, you know, Kent State, Kenny Burns going in his second year, Kent, um, you know, got it, you know, spent a lot of time with P.J. Uh, Fleck at Minnesota. Um, you know, he's an old running back guy. He's an offensive coach. Uh, he, he, he likes his, his run game. Um, he's got a new offensive coordinator um, who was the tight ends coach a year ago who um, came from Charlotte, so we've, you know, put on a lot of Charlotte tape as well as Kent State personnel tape and watching what they're doing. Um, so, you know, you're, you're prepared for Kent State stuff, prepared for Charlotte, typical opener. Um, they got a new defense coordinator. I think they got a new defense coordinator halfway through um, the, uh, the spring. The spring. Cody Morgan is their new defense coordinator. Uh, he's a guy that was a, a safeties coach uh, and a special teams coordinator a year ago. So really when you think about guys calling the offense, uh, Carney, uh, and Morgan both will be calling their first game as coordinator, so it's a little bit hard to kind of know what you're going to get either way. That's why it's even more important that the focus comes on us. It doesn't matter what they give give us, we have to just go out and execute. So it's a run, you know, execute the run. Um, if, uh, if we're going to blitz them, then let's, let's, let's be really good at the blitz and keep things as simple as possible. Let our guys play hard, play fast. So uh, with that, I'll open it up for questions. Uh, Sean Fitzsimmons is listed on the depth chart. Is he out? He is not out, um, maybe a little bit banged up, but Sean would be on the depth chart, but uh, probably should put another or next to him. Amanda, thanks for letting me know about that. I'd like to work on that one. So, yeah, you know, Sean's been banged up. You know, I'm not going to get into talking about injuries, um, and, uh, but uh, he's been banged up a little bit, and we hope to have him back real, real soon. Have, have the classic monikers of football. And, and maybe even this week, you never know. <laughs> One of the classic things in football, we'll talk about quarterbacks, is that if you have two quarterbacks, you have no quarterbacks. How did these two guys beat that? What have they shown you so mm -hmm. you in camp that they are, beat both these guys are ready to go? You know, last year at this point, I didn't feel like we had two quarterbacks. Okay, I'll we'll start there. Um, I felt like we had one quarterback, I thought. Okay, uh, I feel so much better about where that is. But, you know, you can take slogans and, you know, those terms, Chris, like, you know, I, We'll find out on, on the 31st, right? I mean, uh, I believe we have two really good quarterbacks. I really do. Um, they're both, uh, you know, and again, you know, Nate was, you know, the starter coming out of, you know, uh, spring ball as we've talked through camp. 
and Eli made some major, major improvements. I mean, it's like he caught up, and, uh, and there was some competition going on. And I just, I feel like to say, you know, one guy's got to get that opportunity to take the first snap, but to say, you know, to say, you know, you, you know, at that at that position, at the quarterback position, that, you know, hey, it's it's all about practice, you know, because you know what, you get used to playing against one defense and one coverage or whatever it may be, that doesn't mean you're the best quarterback. So to me, that thing needs to be, you know. Put over into a game-like situation and let, and let it go from there. Just like a lot of those positions, I don't care if you talk about the defensive end or deep tackles. I mean, I got you know the Kai Johnson, and Nick James. I say, I mean, shoot, there's a lot of guys up there that you know, you know, there's a you know that whole D line. I mean, Elliot Donald. I mean, who's the starter every week? There's going to be a different starter there. I can you know I don't want to bet my life that uh, every week it's going to be a different who's, who played well the last week. They're going to get that chance in the beginning of the week. You could be a, you know an all conference player if you don't come out and practice the next week. Um, you you're probably be a backup if you can't get the checks and you, you, know, you come out there and slop around and practice thinking you just can show up. So, you know, it doesn't matter what position. You know, if we got five D tackles, then do we not have any? I think it's the same thing. I, I really love our quarterback situation right now, and I feel like we're in a good position. And someone's going to have to prepare for two of them because they're both going to play. Yeah, with that, is, are there skill sets complimentary? Where are you been? Good to have you back. In Paris, that's okay. Oh, All right. 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 You have a croissant over there? Or I what? have many croissants. Beautiful. But um, are there skill sets, or is like anything skill sets complementary? I mean, do they bring different things to the, to the offense? You know what? Um, you know, the offense is not going to change that much based on who they are, but they're very similar in what they can do. I mean, like I said, you know, start off, you know, they can operate and manage the offense. That's the first thing. I mean, it's not like one's going to be slower than the other. They can both operate it at a fast tempo. Um, and, um, you know, we'll, we'll find out what skills come out there on game day. And, you know, who's got those intangibles on game day and who's going to bring it. Bring us the best, the best package. When you called me a minute ago, I made Kent State not know he was getting kind of getting quarterback. Is that important to you for the other team? Not really. Got a doubt in their head? Not really. Sometimes in different positions, but not for that one. Uh, that's not the reason. I can guarantee you that. Um, you know, because they're they're prepared for both of them. Uh, even though they probably don't have much tape on Eli, they're prepared for both of them anyway, probably. And just like we're prepared for two of their quarterbacks. So Pat, you're saying that both guys will play Saturday. Do you guys have certain packages for one or the other? There are certain things that both do well in different ways? No, the same package. You know, to Will's you know, question, really, it's the same thing. Like, you know, it's not like you know, we can't run this with him. We get to do this. Now, I can tell you this. You know, Coach Bell will have – he'll sit down with both those guys and say, hey, what do you like? What do you like? What do, you know, they each have things they like better, but they can operate and do everything the same. It's not like he's going to have to change. But, you know, instead of, you know, you know Nate's favorite play may be this – and Eli's is this, but they're all in the favorite because they've all practiced everything that we're going to have in the game plan. Are you going to settle this battle after Kent State week, or are you comfortable rotating them into Cincinnati week? You know what? I'm, I, I like to do what, what comes out, you know, whatever happens. I mean, I, I think we maybe can all be sitting in that, that, uh, that press conference room after the game going, okay, it looks like that guy, right? I mean, we could all have our opinions. I'd like to know as soon as possible. I don't want to drag it on. I want to, I want to get it done as soon as I possibly can. So you're, you're trying to judge the two quarterbacks. You're also trying to break in a new offense. Do all these things make you maybe less likely to hold big chunks of the offense back like you've done in the past in the season openers? No, not, you know, when you say that, I've never held anything back. Um, you know, I mean, I've never called an offensive play, but I've never held anything back in an, in an opener. Uh, we're not holding back. We're going to play football. We're going to win a football game. Kent would not be uh, coming in here. You know, they'll play their best game of the year. I can promise you that. They will come in here cranked up. Um, you know, two hours down the road, and they will play their best game of the season. Has Nate shown a similar level of mobility to Eli? You know what? At times, yeah. I mean, I mean, you could probably put him on forties if you can go to the NCAA twenty-four game. I think one's got better speed than the other. I don't know how to predict that, um, but uh, you know, I, they both run pretty darn good. That you, it's not like there's some drop-back quarterback that you know isn't going to be able to be mobile enough. Um, so they, they both move well. Lots of boards and no boards in front of Rashad Battle. What did he do well? I don't know. Maybe we missed an or there. You know, Rashad Battle's <laughs> done a nice job. I mean, I think, you know, you know, Ryland and you can almost say Taman, same thing. And Rashad might be the top three right now. So you know, you could probably put another or there if you wanted to. I've got board right oars on EJ Sheet, and Mike Sheet. Uh, but Taman, you know, between Ryland, Taman, and Rashad, those to me right now at this point would be those three guys that are going to get the, you know, the majority of those reps. And uh, we'll kind of see how it goes, but you know, I've been I've been impressed with Rashad. He's a senior, um, and um, you know, he's he's uh, he's been through a, a battle, okay, through his career here at Pitt. 
I'm excited that he's stayed healthy and uh, uh, excited to see him play. Yeah, Rodney's obviously played a lot of snaps for you. What has Desmond shown uh, to have that over there in the running back? Yeah, I mean, Desmond, you know, and I probably said this, you know, pre-practice, you know, just Desmond's got a little gear uh, and he's tough. And, you know, you know, like I said, he's, you know, I think he sits behind the podium and he's kind of like this, like looking at the guys when he got a chance to sit up here and talk. And as a matter of fact, I think the guys messed with him a little bit and said, hey, stand up. Uh, but because uh, we have a lot of fun in here, you know, Desmond is a tough son of a gun, let me just tell you. And he's fast. He's got burst. You know, he's not as big as Izzy was in the, back, in the past, but he's got one of those. He's got that breakaway speed that if you give him a hole, he can he can take it to the house. So that's what. And, and again, he can catch the ball in the backfield. He's, he's, he's very versatile. I think so. I think, you know, um, you know, he wouldn't tell you that because he doesn't say anything. It's like I try to get, you know, get him to talk about it. He just smiles. And you got to love that about him. You didn't list your quarterback's alphabetical unit as an Oregon. I was curious why not. Because um, I would struggle with the alphabet, I guess. Maybe. I, don't know. I have no idea. Now, you, you say you like made big strides. Is everything else alphabetical in here, or wise? I have no idea. You said uh, Eli made big strides and was close to that guy. But maybe what specifically have you seen from him during camp to kind of make you know, a competition? Probably once in his fair, you know, maybe in spring ball. You know, he had a little bit of a hammy. I mean, I think he dealt with the hammy going in, the hamstring injury going into, you know, spring ball and out of spring ball and just, you know, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I couldn't put a finger on it. I mean, just the time, I guess, that he had in the offense in the summer. Obviously, he did a great job in the summer. And, Spending time in the classroom and just you know learning it, um, you know, so I couldn't put my finger on exactly why, but he's he, you know he's made some strides that's for sure. Hey, can you speak a little bit to what you've gotten to know about Cade just over the, the eight months since you hired him? You've gotten to know him a little bit more. Hey, what was the question? Uh, what have you gotten to know about Cade uh, since you hired him and since you got here? Gosh, you learn every day. Uh, you want the good or the bad? Just kidding. <laughs> uh, both. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Um, no, you know, Cade's, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's uh, enthusiastic. He coaches the same way every day. He's consistent. Uh, you know, I can't say he's anything that but a ball coach. Coach's kid, um, you know, I just, you know, love, love everything about him right now. I mean, we'll find out when games come, but uh, he's, a, he's a ball coach. He's into it. He's got great plans. He, uh, you know, I like the way he game plans. That's something that comes up new. There's something, you know, every day there's something maybe new to learn about him. That, you know, I can't go through the list, but like just watching the way he game plans, he game plans different than other guys, um, you know, that I've been around throughout the years. Uh, so um, that's about all I can tell you. Pat, uh, I, I, my years of covering you, I don't think I've seen a freshman be get, get one of those starting wars like Francis Brewery did at a, at a position like that. What has yeah. he done to show that he's – at the level of guys that you're very familiar with, like Natai. Yeah, um, you know, Francis started off a little bit robotic, uh, but he's a he's a pleaser. Uh, you know, when you talk about you know uh, four or three, and, and, and you know, he's a guy that's just trying to do exactly what you know Coach Dallas or we want him to do every play. And if you tell him to stay in his a gap, stay in his a gap. I mean, he he's really consistent with his footwork and doing what he's supposed to do. Um, you know, he's probably the hardest transition was just trying to teach him how to run the ball. He, you know, play the run and turn around and look like this for a while and, and see where the ball's going, but he's improved there. But like, he just attacks his gap and, and, uh, and, and he's where he's supposed to be. And that's half the battle sometimes. Some guys want to swim around gaps and, and, and try to, you know, at lib. Um, he's a dude that just consistently every day you go, I trust that guy that when we put him out there, we say, do this, he's going to do it. That's why he is where he is. And, the other thing that separates him a little bit is um, he is he's he's strong. When he puts his hands on you, you know. I'll tell you, you know, the, the first day we went scout team. I don't know if I told you this already. Um, first day we went scout team, um, and he's on the scout field because every freshman, regardless of what your position is, goes to the scout team. And uh, he's over there. I heard some of the old line say, "Well, he ain't gonna be here long, coach." You know, it's kind of like you know they they know. I mean, that's that's what you want when guys know. Who that guy is, uh, that's, that's what you want. You're, by the way, your, your D tablets are not alphabetical. Mm -hmm. You're going to need all five of them on a day, aren't you? We're going to need six or seven of them. I like to play them all. You know, um, you, can you again, practice is practice, guys. It's hard. You know, I'm sure it's the same way next door. It's hard to tell 
you know, like who those guys are to you. I mean, that's why I wish we had scrimmages. Now, I could give you, you know, there may be less oars on there if you get a game and you don't get it done. I mean, maybe there's less oars, you know, week two, but until you have that opportunity to, to, you know, to do it in a real game and not in a scrimmage and in front of people when the lights go on, I think it's critical. What did Jimmy Scott do to separate himself as a starter? You know, he grew up a lot from spring ball. Um, you know, Jimmy, Jimmy's been solid. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm, 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 again, again, he separated himself. But let me tell you, Chief is right there, too. I mean, I could put another damn oar there, right? I mean, I really could. And, uh, and going to the other end, Sincere, you know. Sincere, you know, a little bit banged up during camp. But Sincere's another guy. Like, I, I'm, I'm excited to see all those guys. And that's a good thing. If there wasn't many oars on here, it means we don't think we have many guys that can play for us. Uh, and, again, in two weeks, I may say that, hey, there's less oars, and, but gosh, I was wrong, and you know, and again, that's what we're going to find because, you know, camp is over, right? I mean, when the season starts and you get a, an opponent, uh, you find out really where you are. Chief told us at Media Day that he doesn't script plays in practice. How much do you, yeah, how much do you think that that's helped the two quarterbacks uh, take command of the offense? You know what, that's a great question, Amanda. Um, I don't know how it helps him take command. I just know he's never scripted a play. That's something I've learned. You know, go back to your question. Like something like never script a play. Like, hey, can we script this? No, you know, like he just calls it. I love it. You know, when I was at Michigan State in, in, in the last few years here, I'd have a call it period. Sometimes last year I'd say, hey, it's a call it period. And, you know, we have, you know we're, we're like this reading stuff off of a, a piece of paper. So the call it period is about as realistic as you can get. It means you're doing it. And you know what? It's made Coach Bates better because he's got to call it every day. And he doesn't have a, you know, he's got to call it. Um, you know, he doesn't know what the heck the play is. I think it, it, it makes for, you know, fun practice. It goes fast. Um, I like scripts personally. I'm old school. I like scripts, but, you know, it's something I've had to get used to. It's like, really, you know, I don't know what I would have done if I was a D coordinator. I might not like it as much. Uh, you know, I like to, you know, know what I'm getting and, and get a defense versus an offense and all that. But it is, you know, I don't know if it's, you know, helping the quarterbacks. They just know, you know, like we're going. And, and you know they can operate at, at any speed, and they can operate with regardless of what the call is. That's their job is to know everything. I know you're, no, go ahead, finish up, Amanda. Okay. Uh, I know you're in the midst of game planning, but uh, you're heading into your tenth season here at Pitt. Um, kind of, it's a milestone, and you know you're one of the longest tenured head coaches here, one of the winningest. Do you have any time to reflect on that? Nah, not really. I'm worried about winning a football game. The only thing that matters next Saturday is what we did in the past. Doesn't matter what where the future goes. Doesn't matter. It's where are we today. And I uh, just worry about Ken. It, you know, it ain't about me. It's about these seniors in the front row. It's about our captains and in, in, uh, in this football team. As yeah. honest as you can, as you can be. Who had that? Sorry. Matt, yeah. outside, outside of Brandon and Q, you have a lot of youth at linebacker. Do you feel like you've got some young guys that are going to step up and make some, make some plays? Yeah, I do. You know, you know, Kyle Lewis has played a, a ton of football. Biles has played, a, you know, he's played a lot of football. You know, Jordan Bass would probably be the youngest one in that group of, you know, six guys that you see on the depth chart there. Um, and we have some guys after that probably should put on the depth chart, but um, you know we, we feel good with that, that those six linebackers right there. Of, uh, and Jordan will be the youngest of the of the ones in there. Um, so uh, Kyle Lewis has played a lot of football. He's he's aggressive. He's physical. Biles is a dude. We know Lovelace. I mean, he, he, you know, all those guys can play. We know about two, two more. We know about those two Kent State running backs, Thomas and Garcia. You know, both good players. I mean, obviously, uh, you know. Transfer from Minnesota, the starter uh, is a good player. You know, he was the uh, you know MVP of a, of, a, of a bowl game when he was at Minnesota. You know, Coach Burns, that's his that's his guy, right? I mean, he's going to get the rock. He's going to get a chance to you know run the football. He coached him to Minnesota, and and now he's uh, at Kent State. So you know, both good football players that uh, we're going to have to stop the run. Run, you know, stop the run will be key. You listed uh, Kenny Johnson as a starter. What did he what did he he show during the summer to improve from what you saw from last year? Um, you know, Kenny's had an up and down, I'd say, fall camp. So we're looking to, you know, um, again, you know, as, as a lot of guys, especially at the receiver position, were banged up during the, during the, uh, you know, during the summer. Um, you know, Kenny's back and feeling good, and, and uh, he has been for the last several days. Uh, so we're excited to see him back at full speed and uh, playing Kenny ball. But Kenny's a mature. You know, the offense fits him, and he's he's an explosive guy that can make plays. Anybody else? No, then Mike, EJ's not here, so we can we can cheat on EJ. I, I do have one more, Pat, since I haven't been around. Um, you got a lot of guys on this offense that were recruited under you guys were playing a different style. Yeah. And I mean, it, it appears, at least judging by what I saw in the spring, this is pretty different. Do you mm -hmm. 
you know, do you have to allow for some breaking in process here, or do you expect hey, hey man, we're stepping at ten seconds until until they get it? Yeah, um, <laughs> it's a great question. Again, well, I, I would say this: we're going to find out. But that's what the the whole you know. 292 days since January, whatever it is, uh, since you know, January 8th when we set this room here and talked, um, is to get them on that tempo. You know, and listen to Coach Bell every day talk about it because you know it's new to me. Just the operation. Our operation is getting better. Like our operation right now, with guys that haven't been in this system and didn't get recruited into this system, is so much better than it was when we ended spring ball. So the operation getting lined up, doing all those things is 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 better. Is it good enough? We'll find out. Like, you know, guys are moving and not set, and the quarterback snaps the ball, but you had a legal procedure. It's gonna, you know, it's gonna annoy the hell out of me. Um, but like our operation keeps getting better. You know, these guys that were in a different offensive, you know, um, you know, half of them played in that type of offense, or three quarters of them, or maybe 100% of them played in, you know, similar offenses in high schools. They love all these one word calls, you know, that tell you what formation to line up in, what play to go, and, and it's just like that's kind of, you know, we see it every week, whoever we play. Um, so, you know, I think they're used to it. Um, and uh, I, think, I think it shouldn't be a problem. Anything else? All right, ladies and gentlemen, appreciate you.